you know, be real with them. And so I feel like a lot of people leave here with friendships rather than just a tr just a, just another song. You know, I think I think that's kind of the biggest biggest thing that like the biggest impression that we leave on people when they leave. <laughs> Up. I'm Chi. I'm the studio manager here at Dream Space. Um, if you call the number, I'm going to be the one you're talking to. So give us a ring and lock in a session. I'm Jack. I'm the uh, head engineer over here at Dream Space. Uh, you call Chi to lock in a session. I'm most likely going to be the one that pulls up. I'm Apollo, part studio manager, and I also built the whole studio. And this is Dream Space Studios. kind of started off a phone call uh, I was working my day job and uh, I decided to call Apollo one day a buddy of mine told me about a rental space and uh, we kind of just came up with the idea of starting our own studio then we were recording with Jack at another studio and you know he was kind of our guy our go-to and you know kind of decided that if we were gonna do this then that was gonna be who we we're gonna do it with and invest in and yeah it all started with a conversation with me and Apollo and you know, Apollo started the conversation with Jack and it kind of just elevated from there. Dream Space was, the name came from Apollo and it, it's, it's you, you look at the space and you think it's, you know, the space of your dreams, but that's what it's supposed to be. But the name actually means the place where dreams can like, where like the artist dreams can come true. That's the point of like why we named it Dream Space. As far as like how it all came together, yeah, I was working at another spot and um, Apollo came to me and was like, hey, you want to run your own gig and, you know, be your own boss? And uh, at the, that sounded really nice to me at the time. I just told him like, you know, feel the dreams, you build it, I'll come. Because everybody always wants to just, you know, everything sounds like talk the first time you hear it. Uh, and he actually built it, so I came. Yeah, it started with the conversation with uh, Chi. We we're just kind of talking about ideas that we wanted to do, cool stuff that we wanted to build. We're both artists, and, you know, we love music. And there's some other cool studios around, but we wanted to build something that was next level, really bring something to the table that no one else had brought. And it's kind of where the name came from, too. It's a cool name, especially with the spaceship vibes that we have going on and everything. It's it's definitely the place that you can come to to help make your dreams a reality. And yeah, it started from a conversation, which led into action, which led into, you know, how are we even going to do this? And who are we going to do it with? And at the time, I was recording with Jack frequently, and he was the only engineer that I wanted to record with in the state. And... He wasn't in the best position at his old spot either, and I just kind of came to him with a plan and said, look, I don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but, you know, I know that you can run it and we could build it. So we, uh, we took that and we ran with it. So finding the spot, uh, I think it was one of them or both of them, Hayden, Chi, that found it, and... Uh, I was out of town for some personal reasons, came back and uh, was like, yo, we found this tight spot that's not too expensive. I think we could build it out here. It's a basement unit. It's got a bunch of square footage that we could work with. We could start off with one room and then expand from there, which is perfect. You know, you don't want to start small and build something great and then have no room to grow and have to redo it somewhere else. So a spot like this was ideal and we couldn't afford to pay you know, two, three, four dollars a square foot, like a lot of other real estate around here. So it was an attractive deal. We we checked it out and uh, it was pretty much bare bones. So we didn't have to tear a lot of stuff out. We could kind of just build the vision from what we had and maybe tear down a wall or two and start up from there. And that was that was nice as well, because we didn't want a spot where we would have to gut everything. 
be a lot more labor intensive, a lot more expensive. And, uh, you know, and then we also had people like Steve Durr who helped us design it, teach us how to build the rooms properly, how to make sure that there's no lateral surfaces and building a cone shape where it starts smaller in the front and it grows to be bigger out back with angled walls and pitch ceilings. And we literally just tore up everything and started running tape lines and figuring out what rooms would be where and how we would angle the walls to make it look cool and make it spacious enough to where it's not too cramped or you know, whatever. And, uh, yeah, it was just a lot of honestly, like fly by night stuff. Like <laughs> we want to do something. How are we going to do it? We don't know, but we're going to figure it out. So start to finish. It's probably like four and a half months or so, five. We wanted to get it done like by new year's and we got the, we started the lease in November of 2021. Yeah, we we long overshot that. We <laughs> we signed the lease on November 1st and didn't finish until like early March, but uh that was the thing too. Like we hadn't we had a general concept of what we wanted to build, but as we kept going, we're like, "Oh, you know, we could do this. That'd be that'd be super cool." And Jack had the idea with the clouds on the ceiling and the design, and those alone took probably 3 weeks themselves to make by hand. And I mean, speaking of difficulties, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's always like a running, that's a running joke with us that like the clouds themselves, like were the by far the hardest thing to build in the whole studio. But it's what makes this room so recognizable. And it really almost kind of makes the studio itself because you walk in and you could change the lights, whatever color it's in a cool design. And they're actually functional too. So it keeps, noise waves from bouncing around and causing negative feedback towards the engineer. Uh, another big challenge too was framing out the rooms. You know, most rooms are square rooms with flat ceilings, parallel walls. Uh, the control room is seven sides. It's It's got a flat front just where the window is and then you got the little parts that taper out and then you got these walls that angle all the way out and then you got the back creating the cone shape and then on top of that we have a pitch ceiling so the ceiling in the front of the room is lower than the ceiling in the back that was a challenge to frame that out uh, a lot of angles a lot of complicated like geometry and math went into that. Oh, I think it's very important one thing that we wanted to do here at Dream Space was build a studio that was catered to artists and what really aided in that was having jack someone that works with artists all the time and then me and chi also being artists like we know what we know what artists want we know what they want and part of that is building something that's quote unquote futuristic if not at the bare minimum modern because a lot of other studios are outdated looking and just look like they need a refresh you know, it's the same old, same old. Yeah, it's all about vibes. When when you come to make music, you want to be in a good headspace and you want to have control and freedom to enjoy the space in in the ways that you want. And we really cater to that. That's a reason why we have a private artist lounge and they can hang out in there and kind of chill if they're not in the booth and, you know, play some PlayStation or whatever. They can change the colors to whatever vibe they're in. if. You know, if, if they're feeling a certain type of way, they can definitely change the room to match whatever vibe they're going for. It's all vibe. We, we're making art at the end of the day. Um, and that's what it is. It's, it's an artistic creative process. You know what I mean? And if I put you in a stone white interview room, you know what I mean? Or like a police interrogation room, you're not going to be creative or th whatever you create is going to be indicative of the space you know what I mean the space and being able to you know go all the different colors and having the spaceship vibe is meant to be able to put you in a headspace where you don't have limitations by what's by your environment right um, and the reason I guess that we went with the spaceship theme is just because 
it, this, is cre this is creativity meeting technology, and this is a te technologically based uh, industry, recording studios, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, phonographs or tape machines or DAWs, uh, it's all technology, and right now technology is at iPhones and SpaceX and Teslas, and it's all, you know, sleek, white uh, curvatures, or in our case, um, you know, hard straight lines is what we went with, and trying to make it look like the studio of, if not the bare minimum today, the studio of the future is what we're going for. And that combined with, you know, really loud speakers and a mix that sounds good should all culminate in a process that leads to the end result of what the artist was hearing in their head before they walked in or something better. What we're going for, what we went for at launch and what we still have to this day, um, is one signal chain. You know what I mean? A signal chain is everything from the mic to the DAW and what's in between. So we wanted at, at open a top of the line signal chain, which is, you know, one of the best that money can buy. So our signal chain right now is a Neumann U87 into a Neve 1073, a real Neve 1073, not a, a knockoff, um, but a Neve 1073, a UA 1176, which is a compressor, uh, again, a real one, not a knockoff, into an uh, Apollo interface into Pro Tools Ultimate. And even the Pro Tools in and of itself, I believe we spent five grand on plugins and other stuff for. Monitoring, we have Neumann KH310s. Yes, because the upper ones are 420. So these are Neumann KH310s. Some big old live speakers for when you want to hear your mix, what it would sound like in the club, uh, at club volume. We can absolutely do here as well. So this is control, live, lounge, lobby. Technologically wise, uh, there's nothing real crazy going on in there except for like this room being a seven point room in the shape of a horn. That has the same thing going on, but it's a five point room. No parallel surfaces and a pitch ceiling. And that's also, you know, for when the voice, when the artist is doing his thing uh, or her thing, their thing, what you want captured is what comes out of your voice, right? That's what you want captured. and. What you don't want captured is room reverberations. You don't want it to sound like there's an echo. And there's no echo, even in a big room like this. Same, uh, same story over there. It's a, a, a dead room. So all I get when I record you is your vocal, nothing else. There's no other um, frequencies or uh, unpleasantness that gets captured in the mic. The flow of this, um, you know, we kind of did with what we could with, for what we had. But as far as kind of changing this space into a recording studio, I feel like the flow is, uh, works out really well here. You know, we tried to make sure that we had focal points almost in every room, if you will. You know, tried to make sure that we didn't leave any detail or, you know, missed or any stone unturned. A lot of people love coming down into the lobby and seeing the big sign on the wall. You know, we got the TV up on the wall with the with the desk there. I mean, it's uh, it's a lobby, but you know, we even for just a lobby, we tried to do that. It's all painted black to kind of fit with the theme. You know, we wanted to have some white rooms, some black rooms, just like the lounge back here. It's a black room as well. Just kind of fits the theme, uh, f keeping the white rooms white to bounce off the lights and the creativeness. A lot of a lot of the design that went into these rooms was really to just kind of enhance the creative space. And uh, we get a lot of great reactions of people coming in. A lot of good impressions uh, when you first walk in the door and you know, when you leave with that mix, you know, it kind of really just brings it all together and you know, kind of gives you the full swing of the, you know, what you get here at Dream Space. I think probably the main thing that separates us is there's no one single owner or authoritarian person, uh, entity. Pretty much every other studio I can think of, at least locally, is owned by a single guy. Uh, over here, there's five of us in total. So if any one of us has an idea, we it has to get through the filter of four other guys, you know what I mean? I think that 
helps and leads to a more cohesive and thought out approach to anything that we want to do. And there's just, there's no one autocrat might not be the right word, but autocrat that can, you know, just randomly say, we're turning the ship this way out of nowhere. Um, and sometimes that's important, but I, I, th I also think that uh, when we've needed to pivot, everybody's also always been on the same page as far as that goes. I think the other thing that separates us, maybe not as drastically as the owner thing goes, is the space age thing, the space age look that we're going for. I'll also say that we're all under 26. That's what I was gonna say. To bounce off of you, I think our age has a lot to do with it and our involvement in the culture considering you've been recording for five plus years professionally at the highest level uh, we've been artists for majority of those years through you and the fact that we're able to take what we've seen in the culture and kind of turn it back and give it back to the culture i think that's really what makes us different along with having uh you know us three being young and our other two owners who are in the music industry or have a music industry experience i think what we take from the culture and what we can give back to the culture is really what kind of separates us from the pack i agree i think that the main reason why we have seen the success that we have and the love that we've received is because we we understand the culture and we're feeding the culture. We're not giving them just some other studio that opened up that's, you know, halfway put together or something that just looks like it was built out of the late 90s, early 2000s. We understand the younger demographics. We're in touch with those people. We have those connections and when you have those connections and you understand what they want, you're able to deliver that. And we've done nothing but execute on that flawlessly, I would say. Uh, it really just comes down to understanding the demographic of your market, you know? There's no other studio in this state that has this aesthetic. And it's kind of crazy that we're the first ones to do it, especially being so young. You know, we all built this when we were 25, 26 years old. And we just had a vision and put it together and it's just cool to see the love and the reciprocation of that we believe in providing value to the culture receiving value from the culture and continuing that loop to build the culture and i think that's what makes us so unique is that we're not just you know we don't have a quarter million dollars worth of gear but when you come in here you get treated with respect it's a vibe it's the place you want to hang out. It's the place you want to create in. And you leave with high quality music. So, I mean, as an artist, I don't really think there's too much else you could ask for. I'd say our mission statement is to have a studio that is not just about let's record music and make money. This studio is and uh, just us as a team. We want to be and work with artists bigger than Colorado, and part of that is getting Colorado artists bigger than Colorado. You know what I mean? Being big in Colorado is an accomplishment. Absolutely it is in Denver, but we're looking to top billboard. You know what I mean? We're looking to hang plaques on the wall and you know make a fool of ourselves on a Grammy stage, you know, giggling. Our mission statement is to be the place that you can go to and believe that your dreams are finally possible. You know what I mean? You walk in, you hear the mix, you hear how your song sounds and go, that, that's what I was trying to make. It's been, I've been, oh my gosh, I couldn't get it at home, I couldn't get it at X, Y, Z, whatever, whoever. That is what I had in my head. That's our mission statement. And to not only, you know, get that, but to, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say guide because we're not, you know, we don't know everything. We're not, you know, Mr. Music Business know it all, but like to work towards blowing artists out of Colorado as well. Business has been good. Uh, it kind of took me by surprise as a first time business owner. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect, um, let alone in the, in the music industry, but business has been good. It was kind of a slow burn at, at first, you know. It, 
2022. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We started in March of 2022. It started slow. It was a slow burn. You know, new kids on the block. You know, we, we had a lot of reputation to build considering like the studios in the state are pretty well established at this point. What we tried to do is just do it as naturally as possible. Kind of just let people make their own opinions about the space and uh, kind of see how we can build our relationships through our client base. And it's been great. I've met friends through this. I am close with a good percentage of the clients from here just because this is kind of like my world, my space, you know, it's kind of like who I am as a person, which is why I enjoyed like managing the studio so much. You know, we've got a lot of returns um, just because Jack's great on the ones and twos. You know, everybody gets the vibe here. Uh, business has been good. Business has been good. Hiccups, of course, just like any other business. But um Luckily, I've got a good team that we can... To say the least. (laughs) To say the least. Two-month-long flood hiccups. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But um, luckily, we we endure and we're resilient enough to kind of turn it around and and keep the ball rolling. And, you know, we kind of continue to make our shoes bigger and to try to fill those. And I think we're doing a pretty good job at doing that. And, you know, I try not to speak for a lot of artists, but when, when they do tell us like the solid feedback that we get, a lot of the time is that dream space feels like a home rather than work. You know, and that's kind of a big part of what we try to do during, during sessions here. And as we, as we take care of our clients, that's kind of like the reoccurring theme because we don't, you know, we're not in here in suits. Jack doesn't have to wear a uniform. It's not so cut and dry like a typical business would be. And, um, you know, that's kind of how we handle the relationships as well. People are people. And, you know, I like to just treat people like people. I don't think it needs to be all about the money, all about the business. You know, people understand if you, you know, treat them with respect and kind of just talk to them and, you know, be real with them. And so I feel like a lot of people leave here with friendships rather than just a, just a, just another song. You know, I think I think that's kind of the biggest biggest thing that like the biggest impression that we leave on people when they leave. So that came about by one of our like kind of studio backed artists, I guess you could say an artist that we're all really fond of. Graham Wallflower um, kind of got on Andrew's radar and, you know, we started talking with Andrew and through that. Andrew saw the space and, you know, met us and we talked and whatever. And he, he really like saw the vision of what we were going for. You know what I mean? And he saw that he himself was in a position to help that. You know what I mean? Um, the, the trying to not only build local, but not stay local. And he saw that he was in a position to, you know, accelerate that, uh, end goal. And that's, uh, you know, it's, that, that, that that's what we have going on with it at least um or that's how it came to came to be what we have going on with it is you know with andrew being an a and r with uh atlantic hopefully we'll have atlantic artists uh come through here when they're in town that's part of the goal and um, the other part of the goal is that is for that when an artist makes you know something that's good enough it can get into the right hands. You know what I mean? And it, he's there for consultations and he's there to hear the record. And I mean, hell, I don't know if you're good enough, you got the numbers, maybe you get a deal. Who knows? But yeah, he 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 was a really good addition to the team. He is a really good addition to the team. He sees the vision and um, him and Andre Fabre is another one that uh, is kind of the unsung hero. Both really saw the vision and uh, we're really excited to build with them a lot. Yeah, I think a big goal for 2023 is just to continue the ball rolling, uh, keep building the relationships with the local community, uh, start building more relationships with the external community, and uh, really try to establish this funnel from uh, local artists in our state to you know top of the platform, if you will. I think that's another thing that we maybe brushed over that we kind of offer and hopefully by the end of this next year it'll kind of be a you know one-way funnel that's what i would say yeah we have more grandiose plans you know what i mean 2024 25 uh for 2023 i really think it's about compounding our momentum and you know picking and getting that ball up rolling more you know we uh 
hit a speed bump, slammed into a brick wall, whatever you want to call it, with the flood. Uh, we were down for two months, and that really, you know, felt like it hit the brakes pretty hard. The e-brakes spun out. But now that we're back to pretty much where, you know, where we were in in June before the flood, yeah, I'd like to see, you know, you know, we were at 60 miles an hour, got slammed down to 20 again. We're back at 60, so, you know, I'd like to, you know, pick the speed up and go faster and keep the momentum rolling in 2023 to facilitate those end goals of like, okay, let's start getting some people out the state if we can. And, uh, you know, building Denver into more of what would be known as, this is Chicago. A lot of people blown out of Chicago. This is Atlanta. A lot of people blown out of Atlanta. This is LA. A lot of people blown out of LA, New York. A lot of people blown out of New York. This is Denver. A lot of people blown out of Denver. You know, just in that conversation, and a, a, a name listed on that list. Yeah, I mean, we're always focused on growth in any facet of the business. Uh, obviously, we have one room right now. We got this space because it has more room. There may or may not be some limitations to that, but we definitely want to grow at the right time, whenever that is. And we would love to put at the bare minimum a B room and a mixing room, if not one or two of those. I'd like to say by the end of 2023, we have some plans quarter one, quarter two to do some more build out and offer more to our clientele as well as establish ourselves as a bigger heavy hitter in the state. With that being said, like Chi said, building those external connections are very important to us, especially when it goes as far as like two, three, four, five years down the line and what our plans are as far as expanding and growing, putting Denver on the national stage is really something that we want to do as well. Like Jack said, you know, we have a legendary music venue here, Red Rocks. It's already kind of the quote unquote base capital of the world. And, you know, I, I definitely think that it could be a lot bigger than that. There's a lot of talent here. There's a lot of opportunities here. And yeah, we're just going to stay diligent with our, our movements forward, making sure that every decision that we make makes sense and with that sometimes comes time but uh we have a really solid team together and we've been able to put our heads together to do everything thus far and kind of knock it out of the park in at least our personal opinions and i would just love to see more expansion internally as well as externally I did want to say something, a couple shout outs. I really want to shout out my man Dumpy. We got him on the team. We really appreciate having him over here. He's an amazing engineer. Uh, shout out Dumpy. You know, I feel like we've really got two of the best. I want to give a shout out to Oceana. She's our social media manager, an amazing artist as well. She's great. We love her and we love having her around here. Oshi, thank you for all you do. Shout out to Andre Andrew. Uh, we appreciate you guys, man. Hopefully we can keep growing together and make this year really one to remember and uh yeah also shout out to our clients man because we really couldn't be us without y'all so you know uh we are lucky to help you guys create so thank you